Hello, my name is Christina Cousin. I'm a psychiatrist and I'm the director of the Ketamine Clinic at Massachusetts General Hospital in Boston. This is Five Minute First for the Journal of Clinical Psychiatry, and today we're talking about ketamine in treatment resistant depression. The topic for today is ketamine. We're going to be talking about when to recommend it, where to get it, what about other medications, and for how long is the ketamine treatment. Spoiler alert, ketamine is not magic and should be treated like any other antidepressant treatment. Let's start for which patients ketamine is appropriate. There are control studies, rigorous control studies in adults and adolescents with treatment-resistant depression. There are more studies in major depressive disorder and bipolar depression, some studies in PTSD, in patients with suicidal ideation. There are fewer studies in other disorders like OCD or substance use disorder. Major contraindication for ketamine is the presence of psychosis or history of psychosis in ongoing active substance use disorder. From the medical point of view, contraindication are unstable cardiovascular illnesses, such as aneurysm or uncontrolled hypertension. Where to get ketamine? I would suggest to consider reputable clinics, clinics where the clinician allow you to coordinate the care of patients with complex conditions, depression, comorbid with PTSD or medical condition, and clinics where is allowed to have close monitoring of the patient, especially regarding suicidal ideation. One question that comes up very frequently is about the insurance coverage. Some insurers do cover ketamine, but the vast majority of patients have to pay out of pocket, and this is a treatment that becomes extremely expensive. Ketamine can be administered as intravenous, intramuscular, sublingual, or intranasal. I would suggest to discuss with those clinicians at the ketamine clinic which modality they use and what's the interval. In general, intravenous administration of ketamine lasts much longer compared to the other modalities, but some patients are not appropriate for intravenous. And it's very important from a clinician point of view to have a plan B ready because ketamine does not work for everybody. There are many patients who do not respond to ketamine and if they have suicidal ideation, they can become extremely despondent and feel worse. So you need to have a plan B ready. If ketamine does not work, what are the next steps that are indicated in this specific case? What about other treatments? Ketamine works best as an adjunct of other treatment. Most antidepressants together with ketamine are safe and they're actually increasing the response to ketamine, including MAO inhibitors are uh, safe to administer. Atypical antipsychotics uh, usually consider augmentation of antidepressants are okay with ketamine. There is no evidence of increase of the efficacy of ketamine when it's administered together with ECT and we don't have solid data regarding the combination of ketamine and TMS. There is a question about potential interference from drugs like lamotrigine, benzodiazepines, and gabapentin that should be tapered, or uh, the schedule of administration should be changed around the time of administering ketamine. Another question that is very often posed by patients and clinicians alike is for how long the ketamine treatment is indicated. We don't have Long-term data, we have a few years of maintenance in very selected group of patients. For each infusion, the duration of the antidepressant effect is very variable, from a few days to a few weeks, and in some patients, a month and a half to two months, but it's fairly rare. The overall course of ketamine is difficult to describe because every patient is different. For some patients with a single acute episode, ketamine may help in the treatment of the episode, and then there might be longer interval between episodes in a patient who has a more episodic or milder form of illness. Most of the patients we see at the clinic have a chronic depression. They've been ill for five to 10 years, and they usually relapse when ketamine is stopped. In the informed consent, there needs to be discussed the risks and benefits, and also what is the plan for long-term maintenance if the patient cannot longer afford ketamine, very often we'll see a rapid decline with return of the depression and suicidal ideation, and we need to be prepared for this.